Seamless transitions in video editing are a style, where video clips smoothly blend together, creating a natural flow without visible cars. This makes it seem like a single clip. You can achieve seamless transitions in Prima Pro using various techniques, including transition presets and max drawing. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you one of the most eye-catching seamless transitions known as the in-camera seamless transition. Inside Prima Pro, there are two video clips on the timeline. When the video plays, you notice that it starts at a normal speed but gradually speed ups towards the end, creating a blur and making it less understable to achieve a seamless transition effect. This technique involves matching and blending less understable areas of the two videos together, which is the main theme of an in-camera seamless transition. So it can be said that the 70 or 80% of the work for an in-camera seamless transition is completed during the video shooting phase. You may have already noticed that the high speed and the blurred area at the end of the both videos. To make a seamless transition, we need to relocate the high speed segment of the second video from the end to the beginning. To do this, right click on the second video and select speed and duration. Enable the reverse speed options and click OK. This will reverse the video playing it from the end to the start. Now we can trim a small portion from the end of the second video. Let's find the ideal point at the beginning of the second video to trim it, matching it with the ending of the first video for the best transition. Next we can remove the unnecessary parts from the beginning of the first video that are not essential for this transition. Now let's focus on the ending part of the first video. Here we can make a precise cut that will seamlessly blend with the second video. Next, move the second video to the left position it adjacent to the first video. If needed, zoom in on the timeline using the alter key and scroll wheel on your mouse. Now let's play the video or the transition once. It may look good but the transition area is not seamlessly blending just yet. To make it perfect, let's proceed to the next step of speed ramping. Double click exactly at this point to expand the first video track or you can drag the upper line of the video track upwards. You notice an FX icon here, simply right click on it. Then navigate to the time remapping and select speed, which allows you to modify the speed line, which is now showing 100% speed. Now it's time to work on the settings for the second video, which will be slightly different from the first one. You notice here that it shows negative 100% speed because we have reversed the speed. It's important to note that the speed ram and reverse speed cannot be used on the same clip simultaneously. To resolve this, we will first need to nest this video clip. Right click on it and choose nest. You can rename it if you would like, then click on ok. After that right click on the FX icon and select speed. Now let's find the frame to set a keyframes where the video starts to increase its speed. Take the pen tool or you can use the shortcut P key. Next set the keyframe at the selected point. Now go to the next clip and set a keyframe where the video starts to slow down its playback speed. Then go back to the selection tool. The shortcut is hitting the V key on the keyboard. This line is currently at 100% speed. And now we need to grab this portion of the line and drag it upwards to increase its speed to around 250%. Let's play the video once. It doesn't look great, so we need to create a ram here. Click on this point and drag it to the right or left to make some space for the speed ramp. Now click on this handle bar and drag it to the right to create a smooth S curve for the RAM. You can also drag this point to the right, almost at the last frame of the video. Ok, it's time for the second video. Drag this line upwards and create a sum space by moving the point to the right or left. Now create a curve here to make the RAM smoother. Then position the left point to the left. We can also adjust the RAM duration. Finally join the two video clips together. Yeah, it's done. Now you can see the RAM in both clips, transitioning from the lower speed to higher speed and then from higher speed to lower speed. This creates a smooth motion blur and seamless transition. In the final step of this tutorial, we are gonna add similar sound effects to enhance the cinematic feel of the transition. For this, we can utilize a free sound effects pack from AE Juice. Let's navigate to the AE Juice pack manager and select the sound effects pack. Now choose the paper category and listen to some of the sound effects to pick the most suitable one for our transition. Afterward double click on the sound you wanna input onto the timeline. By the way, if you wanna download this sound effects pack and learn about the installation and usage process of AE Juice, 
I have included all the links for you in the description below. Now let's go ahead and double click on this area to expand the audio track which allows you to view the waveforms of the audio bigger. Next place the audio underneath the transition area and play the video. If necessary you can adjust its position. Additionally you can apply the default constant power transition by right clicking on the edge of the audio effect. You also have options to fine tune the audio volume level. Now this in-camera seamless transition looks amazing. If you are concerned about the red line, simply navigate to the sequence and click render into out to resolve it. If you are interested in various eye-catching transitions in Prima Pro, After Effects and DVNC Resolve, I have a dedicated transition playlist just for you. That's all for today, I'll see you in the next video.